Hello everyone, my name is Mustafa. Welcome to my channel, your one-stop destination for immersive walkthroughs and tutorials on databases and data engineering using Google Cloud Platform. If you are passionate about harnessing the power of cloud technology to manage and analyze data effectively, you have come to the right place. Whether you are just beginning your exploration of cloud data or you are an experienced professional in search of advanced insights, Everyone is welcome here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notification so you never miss an exciting data field episode. For today, we're exploring Deploy, a modern web app connected to Cloud Spanner instance. This is also part of the Create and Manage Cloud Spanner database quest. So as usual, we'll start our lab. When you click on Start Lab, then we'll open our new lab in an incognito window. Copy the password. Click on next here. Paste your password. I understand. So it's going to load our GCP dashboard for us. We can just keep going here. Yeah. So this is the overview of the lab. We want to deploy a Node.js application connected to Cloud Spanner instance. This Node.js application is a stock price visualization tool named Omega Trade. So that's the name of the app that we are deploying. And what it does is that it store stock prices in Cloud Spanner and render visualization using Google Charts. So the back end of the service is the Node.js Express framework to connect to Cloud Spanner with the default connection pooling, the sessions and timeout um, capability. So our objectives for this lab are straightforward. We want to configure the project environment, download and expect the application code, we will deploy the backend application component, we will import sample stock trade data to the database, then we will also deploy the front-end application component, and finally, we will perform operations in the Omega Trade application. So we've started with the setup and requirements, and now this is our dashboard. We agree to the terms and service. So here is our dashboard. So we can keep going, we've completed all these parts, and we are here. So the next thing we want to do is activate our Cloud Shell. So with the gcloud auth list, so click on this to activate your Cloud Shell, and drag this up a little bit. Let's wait for the Cloud Shell to get provisioned and get connected. So let's increase the Text size, just going to use a medium. Yeah, medium is fine. So gcloud at least, and authorize this one. So these are just um, little house cleaning that are like necessary. And you can use this one to see your active project. So you don't build in a project that is not um, the one you want to use. So you can have uh, multiple projects here. So we are here. The next thing I want to do is, this is, the details of our Cloud Spanner instance. If you've been following us in our previous um, lab in this quest, know how to create a Spanner instance, and you would know that to have a database on Spanner, you have to have an instance there. So there can be multiple databases on an instance, and there can be multiple tables in the database. So the first thing we want to do is we want to enable the required Google Cloud APIs that we'll be using for this lab. So just to we'll do a quick overview of what we'll be using. we would be using three applications in parallel, we'll be using the Cloud Spanner, the Container Registry, and the Cloud One. And these three of them, they are like a powerful trial for modern application. So these three Google Cloud services work together seamlessly to build, deploy, and scale modern reliable application. Let me give a brief introduction, or a brief intro into the capability of each and every one of them. For Cloud Spanner, the one we've been working with, it's a globally distributed relational database that ensures data consistency and high availability across region. It is also scalable and reliable in the case that it handles massive traffic spike, developers comfortable with relational database. So going to the container registry, the container registry, one of its functions is, to, is a secure storage for your container images. Your Docker images are built for applications, they reside here private or public access. So it can also give control to who can access your images, balancing security with collaboration. 
and it is integrated with Cloud Build and Cloud Run. So it creates a streamlined platform or a streamlined development workflow for containerized application. I'm going to the final one, which is Cloud One. Cloud One is serverless. It's a serverless platform for running stateless container, which means that you don't have to manage any infrastructure. With just your code, you're up and running. Another function is pay per use. So the cost scale automatically with the application traffic optimizing the resource usage. If you are off traffic, you can scale down to zero. And if you are in your peak time, you can also like scale to 100. So fast and globally accessible. So it delivers low latency and high availability for users worldwide. So together, you can, with these three Google Cloud technologies, you can build the application code and leverage Cloud Build to automatically build and push container images to container registry. You can also seamlessly deploy your containerized application to Cloud One with a single command. Then Cloud One can also automatically scale your application based on traffic, ensuring smooth performance even during peak demands. And you can also monitor your application health and log directly within Cloud One, simplifying troubleshooting and optimization. So these are just some of the powerful combinations you can get from using the Stiggy platform. And there are benefits, faster development, like I mentioned, reduced cost, high availability and scalability, and simplified management. So using Cloud Spanner, Container Registry, and Cloud Run, it's a typical modern cloud stack, empowering users to build and run applications that are fast, scalable, and cost-effective. So, and that's why I'll be using these three combinations here. So we'd enable, these are the APIs for each and every one of them. Since we'll be talking to them from the command line, we have to even, and since we'll be using them, we have to enable their respective APIs. So you can enable these APIs by using the dashboard, but we'll be using this one through the command line. So copy this code, let's go to our cloud shell, paste this code in, click on enter. So you should enable our APIs. Our APIs are successfully enabled, and you can see that here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to download and expect the application code for this lab. So we are using a JIT clone. This is the um, repo. You can copy this here and paste your code here. And if you also want to access the repo personally, so here is also the repo. This is the repo that we just that we are downloading currently on our cloud shell. So you can see it's still um, downloading. So you can take a look at it. What we'll be needing is under courses. After courses, then we'll look for Cloud Span and Mega Trade. So this is where, this is the repo that we'll be majorly using for everything we are doing in this lab. Okay, so that's fine. Let's see if our repo has been cloned. So repo successfully cloned, and you can see this is done. So the next thing we want to do is we want to navigate to the um, folder that has the application code. So you would use the CD to navigate into that particular folder. So I've navigated into that folder already here, and I'm on Omega Trade here. So the next thing I want to do is, so this is just um, how the code is divided. So you have the front-end application, which is which are using an Angular code, the back-end using the JS, and each of them are like hosted on Cloud One, and they talk to Cloud Spanner. So the next thing is that I would be using is that this application relies on a development specific file, the .env, to successfully communicate with Cloud Spanner. So we we'll create that file in in this in the next um, tax. But before that, let's explore some of the codes that we'll be using in relation to the backend. So these are codes that are like useful for the interaction with the Cloud Spanner and how tables are managed in Cloud Spanner. So you have the company .model .js, the simulation .model .js the user.model.js. So you can copy this. Let's view that particular part in our Cloud Shell. Paste your code here. So if you're, if this is taking time to show, you can just then refresh this. Yeah. And you can see we are now in the models. And for me, I can also take you to the models on that backend. Then we have the app. Then 
we have the models. So these are the models that we are also checking. The company model, the JS simulation model, the JS user model, the JS. So this will typically be done by the uh, software engineers within the app. But here we are just like simulating everything. So the next thing that we are doing, we issue a command to inspect the company model, company dot model dot JS, and we're using this command more than the path. You can see that we are hiding the directory of the models. So when you click on this. Then you use your spacebar button to just toggle through everything. So the same thing here is the same thing I would see here when we do when we click on this one. So these are the same thing. You can see this is similar. This is use strict. This is use strict. So same thing. But let's see the full code. You click on your spacebar when you're here. So you can see. So you get to uh, the final one. And that's um, everything. So what um, this code typically does. It's just um, a code that defines a module for interacting with the database, specifically for managing the company-related data. And if you take a look at them, you see some SQL-like code here that typically is just uh, interact with the database. So we don't spend much time here. So the next thing I want to do is let's also see some of the front-end components that we are using here. So let's go to the front-end part. So you can see the front end component and after that you can also view this particular file under the front end component by clicking on this the so same thing you did here you can click on more to see all the codes in completion so what this code also does is that uh, like i said that the front end is an angular so this code defines an angular component named manage company component and um, it appears to be part of the Angular application, and it's responsible for managing a list of companies, displaying them in a table, providing functionalities to interact with the companies, such as deleting and updating them. So that's what um, all this code in the front end typically does. And like I said, you can also view that from the repo. When you click on, go back to the Omega tree, then your front end. Then if you follow the path, let me confirm the path. So we have SRC app, then components. So this is SRC, then your app, then components, then company. So this is the managed company the one I was talking about. And this is the managed company component dot CS, the one we just opened. So this is also the code here. And um, we are good to go. So the next thing we want to do is We've successfully like inspected the application code after we downloaded it. So for tax three, we want to build and deploy the backend component. So let's deploy the backend component. Like I said, we deploy it. Don't forget that we already have our um, our Docker image already. So it's it will be straightforward to deploy it as soon as possible. So let's copy this command. Let's go to the required parts. So we we'll go back to our backend folder. After going to our backend folder, we would create that file. So we'll be using the nano editor. And then nano.env, it will open the nano editor for us. And after that, we'll paste this code here. So what this code does is more of like a, a configuration or environmental variable setup for this project. So it is like a configuration file. These configuration files are like often used in software development and deployment scenarios. So in this case, we are using it as a configuration file for our application server. So this is the project ID, this is the instance, this is the, the instance of the DB, the, the DB name, this is the JSON web token, this is the key, and this is the expiry date for the key. So you can just copy this and paste it in our environmental file so that we can talk to the class panel. And after pasting it, then you press Ctrl X, then after that Y to save, then enter. So we've successfully saved that uh, our deployment file. So the next thing we want to do is we would install the the Node.js package manager. So using the npm and package manager for JavaScript. So use npm install node to install some of the necessary um, deployments. These so are just like um, making our making sure our environment is uh, ready for the deployment. Then after that, we would install our Node.js package manager. You can see, so it may take um, a few minutes to install everything. So 
So we've um, successfully installed everything that we need to install. And you can see them here. So the next thing I want to do is, like I said, let's build the backend application using the Docker file that we already have. And just um, an overview of what um, Docker file means. So Docker files are typically files that contains the exact step to build a container image. So including the installation dependency, the copying of code, and configuring the environment. So one of the benefits of having a Docker file image is that it ensures consistency and reproducibility across different environments, whether your local machine, a CI CD pipeline, a production server. So everyone running that Docker file will get the same image, eliminating issues caused by environmental um, discrepancies. So it allows you to typically focus on building great software instead of worrying about the underlying um, infrastructure. So that's um, just an high level of what the Docker file contains. So copy this part, just paste it here. And you can see it's um, to, do to download and build the image for us. If, because sometimes when your, cl your car share can lose connection, then you see a pop-up here, then you can just click on reconnect. Yeah, so we are done and building all the images. So the next thing we would do after that is um, we would configure the permissions for the cloud shell to um, authenticate the Docker. So with the gcloud, auth configure Docker, then strike on enter. So do I want to do this? Yes. So our Docker configuration file has been successfully updated. So that's um, about that. Then after that, we can now push the application that we just built so our container repository for our quick cloud for our quick lab project. So what um, the container repository typically don't typically does and why it's important to maybe use use that is that um, when you push applications package to container repository of your GCP project, it helps in containerization and development lifecycle. So it enables efficient distribution, version control and secure storage of containerized application which um, is in line with modern DevOps practice and scalable infrastructure management. So when you push application packages to container repository of a Google Cloud project, it's like, it is essential, like I mentioned, for containerized application development and deployment. So this process typically involves packaging the application along with its dependency into a container image and storing it in a secure and private repository. So the container registry provides version control it also enables traceability and rollback to previous version. So this approach supports distributed development for allowing stakeholders to pull consistent version of the application. Container images stored in the registry serve as a fundamental unit for container orchestration. It can also help to facilitate the de deployment across clusters. So integration with CI CD pipelines to ensure that the latest application version is readily available. So additionally, container registry can also offer security features such as access control, vulnerability scan. Pushing application packages to the container repository streamlines deployment. It enhances version management and aligns with modern DevOps practice on GCP. So let's push our image to our, our container registry. So it's, you can see it's, it's pushing it to this repo. This is the um, path to the repo and it's pushing each and every one of them. So when we are done, would no. So we are done pushing that. So the next thing we can do after that is now to deploy our application on Cloud1. And like I mentioned before, Cloud1 is a serverless deployment framework, which abstract the way infrastructure management and scaled up and down automatically, almost instant instantaneously, depending on your traffic. So in this Cloud1, it abstracts away the process of maybe using the managed services like GKE or even trying to spin up uh, an instance or an, uh, putting a container there, downloading Docker, all those ones inside that instance. So it abstracts away all those um, lot of um, hard work and you can just um, deploy it immediately on Cloud1 when you have your code. So let's copy this command to deploy our service on Cloud1. So when this is not pressing, you can refresh this again. Let's reload this. So let's paste the code here. Let's deploy it. Typically, I do fast forward all this process and just then um, catch you up at the end. It 
so this may um, take a while because it will spin up a container in the background and configure all those codes inside and also take a look at um, what the code contains so we we'll deploy the this is the application name omega backend the platform is a man is managed the managed platform yeah deploying it in the us is for region this is the docker image of it and after that like this is what get posted to that container registry you know we push our application to our container registry so this container registry image is just picked from there then the memory that we are specifying 512 and we also under the uh, we allowed unauthenticated users inside so that's fine so this is still running it's, yeah it's done now so it has been deployed and it's serving 100 percent traffic so this is the url to explore our backend app but it's just the backend app so you're not going to like see anything there you can see it's showing cannot get and that's um, all regarding the backend so what's the next thing to do so save this thing here so i have it here already i have it in this browser so you can just maybe copy it out and you use it in when you are configuring the front end so the next thing you want to do is let's import sample stock trade data into this our database and we'll just run that using um, some spanner emulator paste this here so this would just then um, help us insert some stock data you can see it's a certain companies to insert the simulation and it inserts stocks so we loaded some data into our backend database but we can't see that now until we explore it through the front end so the next thing we can do is check our progress and let's see if we are in line we should be in line so we are in line for tax five we want to build and deploy the front end framework so let's navigate into the front end folder paste this here so we are in the front end folder then have our nano editor also let's open our nano editor and our environment.ts so we have to change this base url here to be the url of our backend application and you are you would use you'd leave this api and v1 down so all we just need is cancel all these parts from the http localhost and that part and then come to where we save our backend url copy it and paste it in this place so you can see we have it just then cancel this one arrow should just have this now and this is how it would look like when you are done and after that press a ctrl x then y to save then enter so you've successfully saved that into our nano environment.ts then the next thing we want to do is let's navigate to the main front end folder also so similarly the same process that we did for the back end would also do it for the front end after that would install the node.js packet manager the npm so we'll do that once again so these are the things that would make what we are doing actually run so you can see it's running some of all these tags are cost of engineering tags but because we just want to um, show you on how we can also like connect application to the database and stuff so that's why we are doing this so we are done and after that uh, the next thing we would also do is let's build our docker image so this may also take a while to build like i mentioned similar things that we did when we are doing when we are battling with the backend application so the end goal is to deploy the backend application on, on cloud one also deploy the front end application on back on, on cloud one so we are building the images here yes so we are done and the next thing is we do now um after we build the image then we can now push the newly created application package so our container to our container registry so use this command click on enter say this is push all the layers and after that we we'll deploy the front end application on cloud one so like we always do so let's wait for to push these images to our container registry So this is just um, what we have here. This is what we are pushing. This part that we have here, we we'll push it here. So 
Yeah, so after that, let's push to Cloud One. So Cloud One, this is the name of our application, Omega Trade Frontend. It's a managed platform. The region we are using is US64. This is the image, and we are with the to so allow unauthenticated. So we are allowing unauthenticated access. So let's run this. So the cloud one also take um, some time to get finished, like sometimes five to six minutes, depending on how large your stuff is. And um, why, when that is done, we would now perform some little, little operation on our Omega Trade application and would see how the Omega Trade application operates. So uh, this is done, and this is the link to our front-end app. You can click on this link. You have our front-end app here to open our front-end app for us. And from our front-end app, you can now sign up. So let's sign up with the required details. So the business email is this. Just sign up. The full name that we ask us to use is Panawan Admin. We start. Then the password is Panawan and Panawan. So Panawan, Panawan, then sign up. So here we are. You can um, explore the dashboard for name of companies, and after that, would we'll add a company. So you can see there are some companies there. You can click on Manage Companies. When you click on manage companies, you can add a company. So let's add a new company called Spanner One. The short code that we are using here is SPN. So save. So this is, it's, you see that it is there. And when we go to our dashboard, we can now see Spanner One immediately. You can see Spanner One. But there's no data yet on there. So we have to create a, sim a simulation for Spanner One. So um, let's create a simulation for Spanner One. Then would this is the would use this interval. So let's create a simulation. So the company that would pick um, so select our company Spanner One. The interval that we want is five. Number of record let's say fifty. Then simulate. So immediately we simulate. It starts um, simulating, but the simulating may not be done. But it will, it will have started populating the data, and that is why when you are coming back here, so you can see the simulation is, is it has started. If I come back here after some time, you see that the data have also will also like be changing, like it's changing now. So let me go back to Spanner One. It's changing. If I come back after a particular time, it's also changed. So the simulation has started, and um, you can wait for the simulation to get complete, or you can just um, be doing some other things and come back to come back to that part. So let's um, update the company name. So let's um, update the company name from Acme Corp to um, Coyote Inc. So to do that, click on uh, Manage Companies. Then this is the Acme Corp. We want to update it. So you can click on this pencil icon, and we can change it to Coyote Inc. and update. So you can take note that, let me do it once again. You can take note that you cannot edit this part. You cannot edit this short code from, the, the, from this app. But you can edit the short code from your base on Cloud Spanner. And I'll show how we can also edit that. And you see that when we edit it on class panel, it also changes here. So let me just um, update this and click on cancel. So we have this here. And um, if you go to our dashboard, you see that we cannot see that um, previous name. You see that the name has changed to Coyote Inc. already. So we have that there. So this is our spanner dashboard. This is our bars LTD. We have a whole lot of information happening here. And let's go to class panel and see or explore the database that we have here. So from here, just drag this down a little bit, then go to Cloud Spanner, click on more products. Here is our Spanner database going down. So we have Spanner here, click on Spanner. And this is our instance, the Omega Trade instance. And from the instance, we have database on our instance. So like I said, a database has to be on an instance. A instance may have multiple databases. And in a table, in a database, there are also like multiple tables there. So this is the DB. Let's wait for it to load. These are the tables. The tables we are probably interested in is in companies. When we are on the company, we can view the data that are here. To just have an overview of what's happening. So the instruction asks us to explore 
the buy industries and let's um, update it so let's come here this is buy industries click on it then click on edit so it will take us to a cloud shell so we can now paste this command so what this command is typically doing let me just cancel this what this command is typically doing is that anywhere it sees the company name of a uh, um, buy industries is going to change it to consolidated enterprise and you see that after we run this command we would not see buy industries again so let's click on so you can see that we can't see um, let's let's view all the companies that we have first Control x select star from companies when you click on run you can see we now have consolidated ink so let me attempt to change this um, short code you know we cannot change the short code previously from the app but let's attempt to change it from here so what i'm going to do is um, let's change the short code i'd say update companies set short code to so you know the name of this company has changed to this so i have to paste this new name here this name here. Let's update the short code to YHZ. I don't know if it's capital letter or UGH, anyone. So let's run this. So when we run this, it has updated it. To confirm that, let's do a select star from company once again. Select um, star from companies. Then when we run this, you can see that this consolidated enterprise has changed to UGH. So let's go to our app and see if what we are doing actually works. So you can just um, refresh this guy. After refreshing, let's see if the changes that we did actually work. So you can see that we cannot see the previous one, and now we are seeing consolidated enterprise. So clicking on it, still the same um, data, just the name change. When you click on manage company, also you notice that this this um, short code has changed to UGH, and it's here. So that's um, typically all about this lab. If you enjoyed this lab make sure you like it subscribe to my channel and comment your thoughts in the comment section and also share with your loved ones so you may need to go over this lab once again to have a full grasp of what's happening here as it's a little bit technical but you would definitely have a grasp of what we did for today so bye for now see you in our next lab thank you